The sixth seal starts out with a great earthquake. The sun goes black, the moon blood red, the stars fell from heaven to the earth. The sky was rolled up like a scroll, and every island and mountain were removed from their places. Then everyone on the earth hid themselves in the caves and the rock masses, hiding from the wrath of God and the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of their wrath has come, and who is able to stand? So here we have aligned the seven bowls of wrath to the only place in the seven seals where the word wrath occurs, connecting wrath with wrath. Most Christians think that this is the end of the sixth seal, completely subtracting chapter seven. But the seventh seal isn't opened until chapter eight, and so the sixth seal includes all of chapter seven. In the first part, we learn the four winds of destruction are not to be released until the angels have sealed 144,000. According to Revelation 7.3, the angels do the sealing, not man sealing himself. Unfortunately, the current pattern of most religions today is to self-appoint, self-anoint, or self-seal themselves, leaving no room for the angels to do the sealing. In trumpet number five and woe number one, God brings severe judgment on these men. There, the locusts are instructed to torture the men without the seal for five months with the torment of a scorpion sting when it strikes a man. Revelation 9, 6 says, And in those days men shall seek death, but not find it. They shall desire to die, but death shall flee from them. For all of these men, self-appointing and self-anointing and self-sealing, God is going to target them in trumpet five and woe number one. So it's best to leave the sealing to the angels. Now after this sealed number of 144,000, the sixth seal mentions a great multitude that no man could number. Chapter seven says they come out of the great tribulation and then the lamb shepherds and guides them to springs of living water, which we know occurs during the thousand year reign. So when we don't subtract chapter seven, we see that the sixth seal includes the language of the thousand year reign. In chapter 7, John sees a great multitude that no one could number from every nation and all tribes and peoples and languages standing before the throne and before the Lamb clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Verse 14 continues, These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Verse 15 says they serve him day and night in his temple, and here we have a picture of Ezekiel's temple, which will be rebuilt during the thousand year reign. Verse 16 says they will hunger no more, nor thirst any more. The sun will not strike them, nor any heat, for the lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd and lead them to living fountains of waters, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Here the sixth seal is incorporating the very same language used at the end of Revelation and the very end of our Bible. In Revelation 21, John sees a new heavens, a new earth, and the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven. And verse 4 says, He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And so the sixth seal takes us all the way to the new heavens and the new earth where there's no more hunger, heat, thirst, crying, pain, mourning, and no more death because the Lamb is guiding them to springs of living water.